It was a disappointing defeat against Swansea City last weekend. But what positives are you able to take from that game? Yeah, it's an interesting question that, Stuart. I think uh, realistically, you know, we, we can't look at it as a disappointment. You know, they're a Champions League side. They are the champions. Uh, they're, they're a side with international players in. It, listen, our responsibility as coaches and coaching staff is to get the best out of the, the players that we've got and help them to reach their own potential. So for us, ultimately, whilst, of course, it's football and it's a, it's a, a results orientated business, we, we want the wins, of course we do. Our focus is purely and simply on how do we help our players grow every single week in terms of being their best self? Whatever that means, you know, that could be their best self just in their attitudes, it could be their best self in their preparation and their lifestyles, it could be their best self just in their efforts on the pitch and their contribution to the game. It might be that, you know, we're looking to develop their technical or tactical ability and that's how we have to look at it. So in terms of the positives, there's always positives to take because there's always one or two players that are playing really well or there's always a unit that are really effective in their job or the team have done a really, really good job. Last weekend we had a clear game plan, individuals and units and the team have done really, really well last week in their application of that game plan and making life difficult for Swansea City uh, on this occasion, you know, so we take a lot of heart from that. I think the reality is for everybody that is, is around the Adjan Premier League is understanding and appreciating that Swansea City are on a different level to the other seven teams in this league. So we acquitted ourselves really, really well. It's back on the road this weekend at Pontypreth Town Women. Although the New Saints sits at the bottom of the table, do you see this one as potentially a winnable game? Well, again, you, you know, in terms of uh, isolated games, in terms of where we are within the league, we know that we've completed the first round of seven fixtures and we're now in the reverse set of fixtures. So this uh, fixture this weekend opens the chapter on the reverse set of fixtures. We've played Pontypridd and we don't think that we're too far away from them. However, that was, you know, uh, a good two months ago. They will be fitter. They will be more cohesive. They have made additions to their team just like we have. We're in a better position now collectively uh, and then probably emotionally than we were on the first day. Uh, there was a lot of sort of, um, I guess, excitement around the first day. We're calmer now, we've, we've worked our way into the league. Uh, so we would suggest to you that it's just another game and we're gonna tackle that game like we will do any other game, which is have our game plan, have our understanding about how we're gonna play and uh, make ourselves difficult to play against. And if we can do that, then yeah, for sure, the game is winnable. But Pontypridd will be saying exactly the same to their players. They'll believe that it's a winnable game. The bottom line, I think, this weekend is uh, can we get the players on the pitch that we need to get on the pitch to compete against Pontypridd? They're a bigger, stronger, more physical side than we are. They're better prepared than we are at the moment. And we've got to try and catch that up and close that gap. And in terms of game plan, no doubt it will be a, a different approach to the game this weekend as opposed to last time round. Do you have your tactics, your approach, your game plan already set in stone? Obviously, you're not going to tell us that today. Or are you still giving much thought as to how you go into that particular fixture? Yeah, I think most uh, coaches or managers that get asked that question on the lead up to a fixture will you know, I've done their homework and we'll have a clear understanding of the opposition strengths and weaknesses and what they anticipate the game's going to look like and how they're going to, you know, counter all of that. And we're no different. We've done our homework on Pontypridd. We've identified their key strengths and their weaknesses. We know how we want to play. And we feel that if we can play up and we play to our strengths, then it will be a really, really competitive game. So fundamentally, it's down to us. You know, we've said before, do we travel well? Do we prepare well? Can we get off the bus and, and compete? And if we can do that, then it should be a really, really good game for people to watch. And away from the specific fixture this weekend and a look at the big picture itself, it's a new adventure for the New Saints this time round, playing in the Welsh system. 
a number of games in. What are your thoughts on the journey so far? Well, it's a hugely enjoyable one. It's a privilege to be a part of it, for sure. There's no doubt about that. I think I've gone on record as saying, as a manager, as a team, as a club, we recognise our responsibilities in promoting the women's game and developing the game across Wales. We're committed to doing that, absolutely 100%, and we're contributing towards that. We're getting better week on week in terms of being a more competitive and more difficult side to play against. And I'm sure that the other seven sides in this league will be thinking the same and probably saying exactly the same. Uh, in terms of the opposition, yeah, I think there, there really is a divide between the, the top one, two or three sides and the rest of the league. And it's down to the rest of us, those other five teams or possibly even six teams to close that gap and make it as difficult as possible for those one, two or three sides at the top. So that's what we work on every single week. How can we just find those marginal gains, keep progressing, keep concentrating on the things that are in our circle of influence and our circle of control? And although, as we say, you won't want reminding, of course, the New Saints women sits bottom of the table. You are training twice a week. You're bringing the players on in terms of getting to know each other and learning to work together. Also away from the players themselves, you've got two excellent coaches alongside you, Greg and Sarah. How does that work out in terms of training and match days? Well, we've got an analysis as well, Nicola Dean. Uh, she, she inputs as well, so she would do the uh, match recordings for us and provide us with some key information on the opposition. And Sarah and Greg and I will use that information to sit down, assess the strengths and weaknesses and devise the game plan. And from that, we'll then look at the training plan uh, for the week and the formation and the likely start in 11. Um, how does it work? It works really well. I think we bounce ideas well off each other. Everybody brings something to the table, which is really, really important. We've all got sort of different experiences and uh, different insights into the game. So that's working really, really well at the moment. Again, I think I've gone on record of, of saying how valuable they are to this group and bringing the group on. But our responsibility as a three or a four, if we include Nicola, is very, very simple, which is to uh, help and support those players that we've got in our group to get better both individually and collectively every single week and it is difficult you know there's no two ways about it it's an amateur game with amateur players so we don't get enough uh, exposure time with those players both off the pitch and on the pitch to influence as quickly as we would like and that's where obviously we're behind the the other seven teams in this league because they're an established group of players, they're an established coaching team and they've had much longer and a greater leading of working with their players and developing their game model. We're still developing our game model and we recognise that we've got a long way to go, but also we are not complacent in what we're doing. You know, we don't stand still, we move forward every single week. Uh, for example, you know, uh, we're looking again at adding extra quality to the group and e extra numbers to the group. So we're always on the lookout to bring one or two players in which can increase the level of competition for places and raise the standard across the group. So to answer your question, it's going really, really well. You, you know, I think uh, we're all very uh, circumspect in where we are and where we need to get to. We are bottom of the league, as you say. There's no panic at the moment and there's no need for any panic. And finally, Andy, you're actually wearing the badge there, show racism, the red card, which you have done for a, a number of press conferences now. October has been a month of action and the New Saints FC women have been involved in that. How important is that for you personally and the players to support a cause like that? Yeah, that's a really nice question. And thanks for asking that. I think it's 25 years of uh, show racism, the red card campaign. It's uh, tragic, really, that we have to have such a campaign in, in my eyes. Uh, personally, uh, th this, this is really, really close to my heart. Um, I think, obviously, as, uh, as an educator, as a coach, it's everybody's responsibility to, to look after each other. You know, we're all born in this world as kind people, caring people. Something's gone wrong somewhere. We all, yeah, for sure have our you know, tribal instincts, whether it's around our team or whether it's around our beliefs and our faiths or our ethnicity and cultures and so on and so forth. But that doesn't mean that we can't be kind and it doesn't mean that we can't be caring and courteous to other people. There is great strength 
in humanity with people working collectively and collaboratively together. So it doesn't sort of uh, sit well with me when I see people creating divisions and I, and I don't understand hatred and prejudice and bias in, in any way, shape or form. So for me, yeah, it's a, um, I, I won't say it's a personal crusade, but it, it is something very, very close to my heart because I, I firmly believe that, you know, um, everybody deserves a chance, you know? So I've got um, a lot of time for the people at Show Racism the Red Card for the work that they've done and the great work that they've done over the years. And for us to be a part of that is a privilege. You know, it, t it takes seconds out of your day to support that. And I think it's a really, really important thing. Myself, the team, the club, we're fully on board with that and we will continue to commit to Show Racism the Red Card.